All right, so today is Tuesday, September the 4th, 2012. I'm talking here with Tim Levy about uh, alkalinity, and he was asking uh, how to rapidly um, drop pH, especially, you know, for example, if somebody is in a, 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 a high acid pH state. So a high acid would be... Mm, I mean, anything between uh, five and six is a little bit iffy, and if it gets below five, it's really bad. So here's the other thing that will happen: is if you're, and you got to be you got to be a little bit careful. Of this too is that pH is logarithmic, like so. When you go up a little bit or down a little bit, it's it ain't linear. Yeah, I get it. So what happens is if your body continues to go farther and farther acid, if it hits around, um, I don't know exactly. It's probably a little bit different from from everyone. But if it hits between like four and a half and five, then your body will go into, um, I really don't know what the term is, uh, ammoniosis, or I, I, I'm just, I choose to know if I, that's a real word or not. What happens is your body to stay alive will begin producing ammonia. And this is really, really dangerous. And what will happen is you'll, what you'll see is a sustained uh, low pH of acid pH. And then all of a sudden your pH will jump to high alkaline pH, like eight. If you ever see your pH jump to eight, you're in serious trouble, and you got to get help. You got to call somebody that knows how to fix that. Um, and so, and you'll be able to smell a lot of times. I'll, I've, uh, especially if people are over exercising and aren't eating right and drinking right, you'll smell like this ammonia smell in gyms. That's what it is. People have entered into that ammonia-producing state. Very bad. Uh, anyway, um, so for me to get from five point eight slash yeah, six so that, that's a pretty easy seven. I just start by drinking lots of this, and I'm presuming like, you know, uh, a couple of liters a day. Well, the the, the first thing is uh, to focus on is uh, well, two things: the quantity and quality of water, and quantity and quality of food. Right. And also, stress would be a third thing. So, um, so we'll, we'll go down those three real quick. This will be really easy: water, food, and stress. Well, you got stress handled, right? I mean, you got you work from home and. <laughs> Oh, don't open that. It's a, Sorry, yeah, it's a I seal. Didn't yeah. realize. Okay. Um, so um, I'll, I'll give you some in a in a bag or something. Um, Thank you. So you know, stress is an easy one. If you're feeling stressed out, fix it. Which usually means you know, if you're working at a job, you know, get with somebody. <laughs> well, you don't want to quit because then you got another set of stressors. But you, you know, we freaking live in the internet age. I mean, you ought to be able to generate your first dollar online by the end of the day. Find somebody who can show you how to do that. And, yeah. um, or come to you know one of our meetups here in Austin and do it inside track party. So stress is easy and it's complicated. You just got to fix that. The other thing is water. Most people drink far too little water. So I drink um, like I don't know what time it. What time is it now? It's probably about ten. Ten or something. And so today I've had um, the only thing I've had since I got up for around five or six, however it's long it's been, is I've probably had. Uh, well, I've been really busy today, so I've been drinking a lot less than usual. I've had uh, maybe about 16 ounces of Chocolate Bliss and maybe 32 ounces. So half a liter of Chocolate Bliss and a liter of water. And the water I'm drinking is Kangen water, so it's a 9.5 pH and it's electrolysis water. So it's a very, you know, it tends to be fairly alkaline. Right. Um, so if you'd like to um, change the alkalinity of water, it's simple. You just put a pinch of salt. Um, uh, the only salts I'd recommend, and I ain't going to go into why, but either Sunfire salt from us or uh, PRL's uh, pink salt. Uh, the other, I mean, we tested all sorts of other salts, and they're full of all manner of toxins. Just freaking don't bother. Um, just only use either salt from us or Marshall salt, one of the two. And ours is way cheaper. Um, and so what you can do is you just add a pinch of salt to your water and you can, you know, you can put a pH strip in it if you'd like to check it, I, but I'm you don't have to. I'm just curious to one or two times check how much I need to make the difference, yeah, then so, drink it. So when you, when you, you've got an RO system, so that water will tend to be a little more acidic because uh, what makes water alkaline is minerals and RO systems strip out all the particulate matter, which is what you want. Um, and in it fact, It's terrific. The yeah. other one we've got is, that we could get is called deionized. What's the difference between RO and deionized? Because they're both up at Whole Foods. I don't know what deionized. I mean, I know what ionized means to add, usually oxygenate water. Deionized doesn't make any sense because you'd be taking, oh, well, maybe deionized, maybe they're using that incorrectly to mean they're somehow extracting the ionic 
type of minerals out of it. Not really a scientifically well, sound sort of Well, it's Whole Foods. That's the only reason I know it. Well, you know, black Whole Foods, they ain't the you know, sharpest tool in the shed. They're all about the money. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm unsure if that really has much meaning. Um, the, anyway, so what, what, our, what RO system did, did you guys buy? Well, we just get and get it from Whole Foods. So we got, oh, you're uh, buying water from them? Yeah, it's like 30, 39 cents a gallon. It's the best deal ever. Oh, okay. It's easy to get. We get big five-gallon drums of the stuff. It's delicious. Oh, okay. It tests okay on pH. So, Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you may eventually like to, you know, get an in-home system. Right, eventually. We're just going to They're, gonna they're way, way, way cheaper, and you don't have to pay for the gas to haul around the water <laughs> and all this nonsense. But anyway, so the, the uh, pH of your water, I mean, if, you, if that's important to you, um, you well, can... Well, is it going in, in, to in affect my pH in a positive way? Well, it... it it, that's part of it. It will, and you know, if you just drink the appropriate amount of water, of Which high is what, quality sort of water, three well, liters a day. So what I what I what I drink is I drink about um, an ounce per pound of body weight a day. So I weigh um, uh, actually it's more around an ounce to two ounces. So I weigh around one seventy. So I usually drink a gallon to um, uh, two a day of water. That's just water. Right, so that's four to eight. Four liters. to eight liters. <laughs> See, here's the problem: is that all these uh, all these uh, ideas about how much water you ought to drink? I think they're all wrong, because when we started putting uh, clients, especially that were, had um, accelerated aging symptoms, uh, hyper aging, like uh, you know their skin, they just look yeah, no, ugly yeah, as a judgment, it. but their you yeah. know their skin was breaking right. down. Premature aging. Uh, the only thing we did was, uh, you know, put them on, you know, two to four times the amount of water that the medical hacks, the witch doctors tell you to drink. And, and I they, apologize. Make them much. better. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason right. for that is that, you know, your water is you're primarily made out of salt and water. Those are the two primary substances. So your primary focus ought to be on the quality and quantity of salt and water you put in your body. Right. Everything else is secondary. Okay. So what about food? Okay. So food. Uh, the other thing, the, then, then the next thing is food. Uh, food is going to have a very dramatic effect on your um, acidity or your pH, especially acidic, if you're eating foods that produce acid. Like everything we eat, like we, like you and I have a situation where we actually have to manage our pH so that we drive it acid. Because if we don't do that, if we um, uh, just eat our normal the way we eat, we tend to suffer from alkalosis, which is hyperalkalinity. Which means that we're going, you know, up above the 7.2 to 7.5 range, and it's because everything we eat is uh, very dense uh, alkaline minerals. I mean, most everything. And so, if I feel alkalosis has a specific feel to me, I mean, I know if I check my pH, I know what alkalosis feels like. And so, I'll do things like, um, uh, like a few days ago, I started eating uh, unactivated, just raw nuts that hadn't been soaked and usually we soak them and dehydrate them so they're very alkaline but I started eating just dried pistachios which are very acidic to drive my uh, pH back acid. But I'm presuming things like what I'm doing at the moment is avoiding sugar and avoiding carbohydrates. Well those are minuscule sort of things. The really killer thing is uh, anything in a, a bottle bag or box. So anything processed. Anything processed and then uh, uh, so it sort of runs on a scale where the processed foods are the worst right. and processed liquids are the absolute worst because you're delivering nutrients faster. So like if you drink something like, um, well, I can't say any trade names or they'll sue me, right? They'll come after me, the Black Helicopter Club. But if you drink any, any like uh, color fluids in bottles, right. it might be um, anything from almond or hemp or... Um, uh, Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, recording. So uh, we're, we're back on the recording. food. So anything processed, particularly liquids. Yeah, so liquids uh, like the, the, the evil ones or the white liquids like the, you know, uh, or the clear liquids are bad, the, like the cooked coconut water. Don't, you know, just freaking buy fresh coconuts and open them up yourself. The next but worst is probably the white fluids like soy, hemp, almond, whatever milk, you know, that are in these rectangle things. Those are just freaking evil. And then the absolute worst of the like the wa clear watery things that are colors that don't appear in nature like how about the black ones yeah don't drink anything black right <laughs> um, but you know like you know stuff like fluorescent orange and yellow yeah. and red and yeah. chartreuse you know you don't see that stuff in it ain't natural right how about milk 
uh, well, so that's then the next uh, really bad ones are um, any kind of milk because uh, how many 40-year-old um, uh, calves do you see sucking on the teat of their mama? They don't. There's not. And how many, um, how many uh, uh, bears do you see sucking at a cattle, at a cow's teat? No. So, you know, the problem with milk is, first off, we're, you know, humans are, they're really, humans are really stupid. I mean, they, you know, we drink cow's milk, which ain't, you know, anything resembling human milk. It's made to build a 2,000 pound animal. And we drink it past the time when our bodies are even able to process milk. The reason kids stop suckling is that they lose their ability to process the milk fat. And so, you know, if you'd like to be, you know, sick, fat, and nearly dead, thanks, Joe Cross, um, drink lots of milk. Uh, and if you'd like to have acid pH, uh, probably even worse than milk is any kind of flesh food, including fowl and fish. So those are the so, real strong... So, so high the, acid is going to be meat, chicken, fish, yeah, any, acidic. Any, anything that's a cadaver. Right, dead. You know, I apologize too much, too soon. Too bad. <laughs> so, uh, you know, no, no, no eating cadaver. Um, uh, so no uh, mystery meat. Um, so really, fruit and vegetables is really the way to go. Well, yeah, I mean, you eat from the plant kingdom. Okay, cool. All and, right. uh, you know, I, I've heard a lot, uh, one last thing about uh, meat and um, dairy. And all, uh, eggs is also really, really bad. When I'm talking about flesh food, or animal foods, that includes eggs. That does not ex eggs are just freaking evil as all get out. I mean, oh yeah. And also, it's just I mean, it's just solid cholesterol. You know, you're just basic, basically eating uh, you know baby chicks before they're. Ha I mean, it's it's pretty gross too. Anyway, I saw this thing the other day that somebody was talking about uh, the benefits of meat and dairy and eggs and saying that you couldn't be healthy if you didn't eat all those. And I'm coming up on um, probably the last time I had any uh, dairy, uh, eggs, or uh, cloven hoof uh, animals or fowl was uh, the late 80s, maybe mid 80s, late 80s. And I did eat some salmon for uh, several years after that, trying to figure out how to get essential fatty acids. But then I figured out that, you know, salmon eat plankton and uh, you know algae and so once I started eating algae I lost my taste for salmon like in three or four days hmm. struggled with that for like seven years couldn't figure out how to get rid of salmon so you just uh, the rule of thumb is you eat down on the food chain so instead of eating the freaking cow eat what the cow eats so anyway that's uh, that that's the fastest way to really um, you know move your your pH and then if you do get in a jam uh, like say you're in a uh, say you're in a situation where you've got really um, uh, low acid pH, um, like you know, in the four to five range, or you've hit that ammonia producing. I, mean, I guess I'm going to figure out what the name of that is. I'm just calling it ammoniosis. I just freaking made that up. Don't know if it's a real word. Probably not. But anyway, um, either one of those situations can be resolved uh, pretty uh, quickly using um, high mineralized uh, fluids. So if you, for example, um, like if you drank seawater, that would probably, you know, instantly stop it. So if I was in a situation like that and I was looking to stop that instantly, um, I'd make my own seawater. So here's how you make your own seawater. You take a quart of warm water and you mix two teaspoons of sunfire salt in, into it and mix it up. You hold your nose and down it goes. <laughs> and so what will happen at that point, it's really interesting because seawater is... Um, its salinity is just uh, high enough that our kidneys, um, uh, for most people, can't metabolize that. Mm. And so if you have enough salt in your system, your system will say, nope, that's too salty, too, the salinity is high. And what will happen is your pyloric valve will open in the bottom of your stomach, and that water will flow into your small intestine, and then down and hit your ileocecal, and that will open to let it into your colon. And usually within a 10 to 15, 20-minute time, that salt water will completely flush out everything in your system. Which means if you've got any, um, you know, rotten, putrefying, recidifying food in your system, it goes out the other end. So all that acid material, if there is any built up in your intestinal tract, is flushed out. Now, if you drink 
a quart of that water and you don't flush it out, you know, like it doesn't happen an hour or two, and it's like the end of the day, and it's like, where'd this go? That That's a body that's uh, severely salt deficient. So if that happens, you should skip at least a day or two before you do it again, and then do it again. And then if you don't, if it, nothing happens again, you keep skipping day or twos until you get that flush because you'll, your body will absorb those minerals until your body mineralizes and then it'll let it loose. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's, yeah, uh, that's thank you. Good, uh, anything, Appreciate it. Anything else? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm happy. I know what to do now. Cool.